Hi everyone. The first thing that will happen when you're invited to join People HR is you will receive a welcome email. In this email, it just gives you a brief introduction and then you can click here to log in for the first time. With this being a cloud-based system, your company has your own unique URL. It just prompts you to save this as your bookmarks. When you click here to log in, it takes you to a page where you just need to create your password and confirm your password. Once you hit next, this will bring up the address that your company has on the system. If it's in a different, change it here. You can enter your work phone number and confirm your personal phone number as well. When you hit next, you can then watch a short tutorial video. When you then hit let's go, you're in the system. The first tab that you will see is your dashboard. Firstly, this will show you how many employees are in your team, how many people are on holiday today, and how many people are recorded as sick. It will then display all of the employees reporting to you. And you can see here, you have a minus head in red, displaying someone sick, and then the blue plane for holidays. And when you click on, it will show you the duration. At the bottom, you'll see you have three tabs. This second one with the plane is for your own holidays and for you to make requests. So you'll see how many days you've taken this year, how many remaining, when your last holiday was, and there's a countdown to your next holiday. Hit the blue button to request a holiday. Put in if it's a day or more. Selecting the start and end dates. And if you're wanting a day and a half, for example, you can use the up and down arrows and select if it's AM or PM. And you can choose to take less than a day as well. When requesting your holidays, this will reflect your work pattern and it will send a request over to whoever you report to. With you being managers, later on, I will show you how to approve or decline holidays for your team. The final tab that you have on your dashboard shows you absences within your team over a rolling 12 month period. So it's the total number of absences within that time. Next down, you have a news feed. Now only HR can publish news in here. Any communications, discussions will be in this section. When the news is posted, you may receive an email which has the news content on it itself. And some news items may allow you to add comments on there also. Okay, so now if we go into your team tab, this will then display all of the employees firstly reporting directly into you. But if you have any indirect reports, you can hover over the quick filters area and include them in this list. If I just go into an employee, I'm just going to run through the employee profile here. So firstly, you have an overview, which will show you the length of employment, number of absences for the employee, and holidays remaining, along with their work details here. If we go into the employee's planner, it will always open up at the current month. And along the top, the icons just total up all of the activities from these areas down the left hand side. Now for you as a manager, if you go into an employee's holiday area, 
and put in a holiday for them, it will automatically approve and not send any emails out at all. If an employee no longer wants a holiday, they can go into their planner here, or you can go in, open the record, and you'll see there's a delete button in the bottom left hand corner. Now if the holiday hasn't been approved yet and an employee deletes it, it will automatically remove itself from the system. However, if an employee deletes a holiday and it already has been approved, it will send you another email to approve or decline that amendment. But for you doing it, it will automatically approve it. Next down we have other leave. Employees can request other leave by going into their planner, which again will send you an email to authorise. All that happens with other leave. Select in the details part whether or not it's a day or more, or hours, and then a reason needs to be selected. These are demonstration reasons. Your HR team will populate the reasons that you have. You can also upload any files into here. Now for entering sickness for any employee, click into the day. And the first tab you see is a details tab. You can enter whether or not the duration is a day or more, half a day or quarter of a day. And then you can select the sick reason. Then put in the duration. You have an options tab. And with this, there are certain types of verification that may be required for each sick reason. There may be your own return to work form or self cert, which needs to be actioned. What will happen with this is you will receive an email alerting you when the employee is back to enter this relevant information. So if it does require a self cert, for example, you can put in the date that it was received. And also if a back to work interview is required, you can action this as well. If your company is using our online return to work form, you have the return to work option here. There are two stages to this. So what will happen when an employee is back from sickness, they will be notified to go in and action a return to work form. So they'll go into the sick record, hit return to work, and firstly, they can select whether or not they have consulted their doctor. If they did not visit a doctor, state why not. And then check these relevant areas. So whether or not their sickness was caused by an accident at work or an industrial disease. In the event of vomiting, diarrhea, please tick to confirm that they're symptom free for a minimum of 48 hours. And then the employer will declare that the information they have given on this form is true and confirm they're fit to resume work. When they date this and submit it, their manager will then be notified to fill out the second part. So they can check whether or not medical advice has been taken by the employee. And then they have the options to exclude them from work until medical clearance is given. Move to a safe alternative work until clearance is given. And say they're fit to resume duties. Once the manager confirms this and dates it, this will then record on the system. You can also enter comments. Any comments that you enter in here, the employee will be able to see them. And you can also upload any files such as the doctor's note. Now the record will be on here. If the employee is then sick the following day, just go into the existing record and you can extend the duration. What you will also see in the employee's planner is when you scroll up, there may be yellow banners. And these are just indicating that action is still required from a particular sickness, such as the return to work forms or the self certs. And if you click on the view details, it will take you to that actual sickness that was entered. Now you can enter lateness for employees. Simple case of clicking in, popping in how late the employee was and entering any comments. Again, the employee will be able to see those comments. 
You'll be able to view the public holidays in the month. And also view any paternity or maternity records. Only HR can enter this for the employee. You'll see there is a timesheet area. To enter a timesheet, click into the day and you'll see you have timesheets and assignments. Firstly, I'm going to go through the timesheets. Now in here, all an employee would do is go in and enter the time that they started and also the time that they finished. If you are wanting to record breaks, you can hit add more and put the time that they came back from lunch and the time that they finished. You can time in and time out up to five times within the day. Hit save and this record will be stored. Now in an employee's settings, there is an option to use virtual clock. What this would do, when an employee logs in, they can only enter a timesheet entry on the current day and they will not be able to edit the time. What they would do is hit the clock and it will stamp in the current time that it is now. When they time out, again it will stamp in the current time. These times can only be edited by either the employee's manager or administrator. Alternatively, you have an option for assignments. When an employee clicks onto here, there is the option to add new. And with this, the employee would need to select what they have been doing via a project, a task, and a detail. When the employee has selected these, all you do is put in the start date and the end date, start time, and the end time. When the employee hits save, they have an option to submit their timesheet, which will send a confirmation email to their manager of this record. The manager has the ability to make any amendments. Now, if we scroll up into the employee planner, you'll see the sickness percentage for the employee for the year, the employee's full holiday entitlement, how many days they've booked, how many remaining, and also how many days are toil, time off in lieu if you are using this. If you use a Bradford Factor, you will see the Bradford Factor score here for the employee. And you will also see a sick days heat map. You can view the public holiday template an employee is on. And in this settings area, most of this is view only, it's just information relating to the employee's holiday entitlement and certain setup. But if you are using time off in lieu, you can enter it for employees here. All you would do is hit add, pop in how many days, you can enter an expiry date if you wish, and any comments. This will add to the employee's entitlement and for an employee to book toil they would do it in the same way as a holiday click in but if they do have toil you will see there's a toil option for them to be able to select now you can view the employee's work pattern here but only HR can change this and with this print icon you can get a printout of absences between particular date ranges and also get a printout of holidays for the employee. Now we're in the current holiday year here, but you can always go into next year's planner and you'll see a fresh canvas. Now if we go into the personal tab for the employee, you'll see their personal information and most of it is greyed out. The only things that you can change in here are other names and known as. Delete a photograph for the employee or upload a new one and if it's been selected you'll be able to see employees salary details
You will be able to view any documents that have been uploaded for the employee which have been granted manage access. To view any documents just hover over the name and download. You'll see that there may be a signature required for particular documents and I will run through this option shortly. Next down we have a logbook. This is more of a filing cabinet area of the site and what you will see in here in the top right hand corner there is a drop down list with various screens. This is a customizable part of the system so your HR team may create new screens in here so just be aware of that. Some of these screens are view only, some you can enter information into them. So for example one to ones here we can see there's a plus which means that you can go in and edit. If you just go in hit the plus, pop in the date and fill out the relevant fields. enter appraisals in the same way. You'll be able to view any benefits for the employee. The contract screen is non-standard so ignore this. You'll be able to enter or view any continuous professional development, driving license information, any objectives and qualifications. View any training records for each employee. And again, you can click in, to see more detail. And also vehicle information. Now in the contacts tab, if it has been selected for you to have access, you'll be able to see the employee's address, contact numbers, and emergency contact details. Next in the employee's profile, you will see an area for skills. This will show all of the personal skills and all of the team skills that have been given to this employee from the thanks badges. The thanks badges, if we look at this tab underneath, if this is selected on your profile, what you're able to do is go in and give employees a badge. These badges can be customized by your HR team. All you do is hit info, which tell you what the badge is for, who deserves the badge, and what skills are linked to it. Select the badge you are wanting to give to the employee. Enter some comments. Hit next and post. This will then send the, an email to the employee. You can view here all the badges that have been given to the employee from anyone else within the company. And finally, an employee's profile. I'm going to show you how to complete an employee's performance review. This first screen allows you to view any active reviews and past reviews. And if we just click into this active review, what you'll see firstly are several tabs along the top. Now the employee tab will only appear if the employee has already gone in, completed their review and shared with you. Now I'm just going to click on here and have a log and what you can see are all of the employees responses. Now firstly with this overview, if it has been set up by your HR team, the employee would have gone in here and given them an overall score, a core score and a job role score and entered comments underneath. And all of the questions are split within segments. The blue segments here represent core questions. The green segments represents job specific questions. In segment one, we can see there are currently three questions in here which the employee has answered. Some questions are answered by a slider and then twin text underneath. Others may just be a text box. Depending on how the review has been set up, there can be up to 10 core segments with up to five questions within each one and also up to 10 job specific segments with up to five questions within each one. When the employee has completed all of these, they will see a share button at the top, which will alert you. But before an employee shares, you can, if you wish, go into their profile. You will see this manager tab and what you would do is answer the same set of questions 
but based on how you believe the employees are formed. So if we just go into overview here, I can now score the employee with their overall score, core score, and job role score. Once complete, we'll see a tick confirming this. And then go into segment one, rate the employee, answer Y, and follow the process of completion. You don't have to keep flicking back to the employee tab to view their answers. You can look at the bottom here, click on the employee and view their response. Once you have completed all of the segments, you also have an option for 360 feedback. In here, you can click the plus and select an employee to provide feedback. This will be a separate list of questions which will have been created by your HR team. And this remains anonymous from the employee. So whoever fills out the email with the questions on there, they hit submit and it will notify you via an email and also put a file on here which you can download. Once you have completed all of your part, you will see a share button that you can hit and allow the employee to view your responses. Then the review can be closed off. There is also an area for goals. If I hit this here, I can see that the employee has already created two goals. How you would create a goal is just hit this plus icon, enter the name for the goal, the description, if there's a due date, and how the progress is going to be measured. Also, the target to be achieved. All of the goals are then placed into this square and you and the employee can drag the goals around to set their priority. We can see from each goal that there's a progress bar and we can click in at any point and you have the option of checking in. So the progress can then be updated and comments can be entered by yourselves and by the employee. You can also attach files in here. You then have a status for the goal which is currently open. You can park the goal or close the goal. You can also edit any goals by hitting the pencil here. Now, if we go out of an employee's profile, you will then see you have a Me tab. This will open up your profile and the majority of the content in here will be the same as what we've just looked through, just with a few differences. So first we can see your planner. Again, all this information is the same. However, this is you as an employee. So if you put in any holidays in here, it will send a request over to whoever you report to, as will the other leave. You can only view your sick records and late records, but cannot enter the, any information in here. You can view all of your own personal information. Again, this is an editable apart from other names and known as. And if selected, you can upload your own photographs. View your own documents. And with the digital signature, you can see for this person here, a signature is required. So when a document is uploaded which requires a signature, firstly you receive an email. Then if you go into your profile, you'll see there is this pending button here. So once you have downloaded and read the document, just hit pending. Type in your name. and then sign. It logs your IP address and puts a time and a date stamp on there and then notifies HR. For you or any employees that haven't signed any documents, there will be recap emails reminding you about this.
Again, you have a logbook. Some of the access will be different in here with this being from your employee point of view now. And the main difference within your own profile is in this contacts tab, you can update your own address, contact numbers, bank details, and enter your own emergency contacts. And again, you have your skills, thanks, and performance. Next down, we have an area for company documents. So anything such as your staff handbook or policies and procedures, you can view in here. Just hover over and view. There is an overall thanks badge. Now, when we looked at thanks a moment ago, that was just thanking your employee, but thanks is open. So you can thank any employee in the whole company. And you can also view all of the thanks badges that have been given to anybody. Just in the same way, hit this give thanks button, choose your badge, enter your comments, but in here you can select more than one person, so you can go in and thank your whole team. Now you have a company planner. In here you will be able to see your team's holidays, sickness, other leave and maternity and paternity. You can filter on sickness and holidays and also choose to include lateness. We have a heat map, which will indicate the darker the colour, more people off on a particular day. This goes from white for no instances, blue if over 1% of your team that are off, green if over 3% are off, yellow over 5% and red over 10%. If you click into any day, you'll see information relating to who is off. And if you hit overview, it will show you more detail about the durations. You can also click onto the month and it will show you all the activities within the month there. Some days you will see there is a padlock on there and it just means that HR have locked this day out. So it won't affect anybody that's already got this day requested off, but it just won't allow any new holiday requests. You also have a calendar feed. If you select this, you can ask the system to provide you with the URL. And then in your Outlook, Google Calendar, or Apple Calendar, whichever you may use, there is an option to create a new calendar and subscribe from the internet. Pop this link in, and then all of your information within this planner here will go into your Outlook. And we do have guides explaining this in the help site, which I will show you later. Next, we have an area for tasks. Firstly, you will see my tasks and you can create a new task in here for anybody. Just click in, pop in a title, choose who it's assigned to, enter a completion date, who it's in relation to and enter a description. It will filter your tasks into overdue, new, due today and upcoming. Archive your completed tasks and in the all tasks section you can view all tasks for your team. Make sure that they've been going in and completing theirs. To complete a task, just open it up, pop a little tick in the top left hand corner so it goes green and then hit save. Tasks don't send an email per instance. It's reliant on you logging into the system. The only thing that you will see relating to tasks on your emails is on a weekly recap which will show you any that are overdue. Next, we're going to look at holiday authorizations. So there are three ways that you can approve or decline holidays. One option is directly through People HR. So we can go in, see the requests, the dates and duration, the approver, and when it was requested. Click in, you will see more information relating to the employee's holiday entitlement, see who else is on leave at that time, then at the bottom you can approve or decline. 
whatever decision you make, it will immediately send an email back to the employee. You have a quick filters area where you can look at all decided requests for your team and look at your own requests as well and view any requests that have been declined and view the reasons. Alternatively, you can approve or decline holidays directly from your emails if this has been selected for you. If so, it'll just show the request, dates, give you the option to log into people to approve or decline or approve or decline using these buttons here. You also have an impact insight which will tell you who else within your team has any holidays booked at that time. The third way to approve or decline holidays is if you have an Android phone or an Apple phone, you can go into the App Store and download the People HR app. Next down, you have some reports that you can view. You'll see there is a top facts about the company report, a holiday outlook report, how absences affect your company, and a hidden cost report. This training tab opens up a matrix which just shows each of your employees that are on a particular course, what course it is that they're on, and the status that they're on. You can use the quick filters in the top right hand corner to focus on who's in progress, planned, completed or outstanding. Now the ATS relates to the applicant tracking system that we have in the system for recruitment. This won't always show on your profile, it will only show if you have been selected as a hiring lead for any particular vacancy. If you have been selected as a hiring lead and want to find out more information relating to that, if you look into the help site, which again I will show you later, we have all video content in there. Now with the performance tab, you will be able to get an overview of where your team is at with their performance review. See how many people have completed theirs, how many are outstanding. Get information relating to who's shared with you or if you've shared with the employee who's still in progress and see the scores. You can also filter on this. You'll be able to see top tens for core strengths if they have been entered for your performance reviews. And you'll also see graphical data for recent reviews versus previous ones. You have an org chart, if this is switched on, which will show each employee in the company who reports to who, and you can click onto the little eye, which will give you more information relating to who they are and a contact number for them. The final thing you have access to in your profile is a ball captions area, and this is just for holiday accruals, which relates to if you have any zero hour employees. If this is the case, again, we have a separate video just explaining on how this is set up and how you can action this for employees. Now, for any support that you need going forward, in the top right hand corner, when you hover over your name, you'll see there's a get help button. When you hit this, it will open up another tab which has our support center. Any particular questions, just type in here and we'll bring up relevant articles depending on the search term. Or depending to your access rights, click into the relevant box and you'll be able to browse by topic. So we have your manager profile, your own employee record, this relates to your me tab and tips. So everything that the system does, we have broken down to short little sections so for example, if we go into the dashboard, we just have a description and also a demonstration video. Back within people, you have the option of turning on Google Translate if you wish. Or you do, switch this on and you'll see there's an option to select language. And in here, you can also reset your password. Now, if you or any employee forgets their password, on the login screen, you have a forgotten password option, click into here, enter your email address, and we will send a password reset email to you. 
The password reset emails do expire after 15 minutes. If for whatever reason you are still unable to get into the system, from the login screen you have the option of contacting our support team. Now for anything outstanding on the system, on a Monday morning you will receive a weekly recap email. This will show you firstly who's on holiday this week for you, any sick return to works or self search that will still require action. You'll see any overdue tasks in here and any outstanding performance reviews. So as soon as you do receive your welcome email, log in and navigate yourself through your profile. If there's anything that's incorrect, notify HR and just remember to go into your Me tab, into your Contact tab and check that the details in here are correct or update them. Thank you.